What's up guys, Mike Dakota here. Today I'm going to talk to you about this question I got in my inbox the other day. It's about um, should you do competitive programming to get better at interviews? And I highly disagree. I don't think that competitive programming is, is a good use of, of your time to get better at interviews. And here's the reason why. Okay, generally the first two problems of competitive programming, let's look at a recent contest, 709. This problem, this problem, Prison Break, is about, Prison Break is basically about pattern recognition, right? You're given a rectangle and you need to divide into cells A and B. This one, if you realize the pattern, you could just multiply both of your numbers together and you would get your answer. And that's how I solved it under like a minute, I think. Did I solve it under a minute? I don't remember. Let me, let me look at it. Uh, I think I did though. Hold up. Yeah, but that's, it. This, this problem tests your pattern recognition, right? So like if you're, yeah, here, I solved it, uh, solved it under in a minute. But if you're basically, if you're basically, this problem will never be asked in an interview. Like no matter what happens, they're not going to ask you this in an interview because why would they do this? Like this is like a, it's like a test that kind of just determines you whether you could recognize the pattern, right? If you're interviewing for a company that asks you this question, I don't know why they would value this, this skill level on, to be honest. But anyway, um. Like if, if you have an interview coming up, being able to f figure out this problem is not going to help you in your interview at all. Like you should actually be doing problems tailored towards the company that you're going to apply to, right? Like if you have a, if you have an interview coming up for like, I don't know, Microsoft, then you should be doing problems that are pre previously asked about Microsoft on lead code, because then you were more likely to be able to solve the question when they asked you that question. Right. If, if you've seen it before, you're, you're able to explain your solution and solve that question. But these type of problems are not going to ask you like uh, this, this type of problem is not going to get asked, though. And here, another thing is that the first two problems generally are not data structures and algorithms problems. So if you're they're generally basically math or ad hoc problems. So being able to do well in math and ad hoc, that generally determines whether you're good at the skill or not level or not. Like if. If, if you're being able to do well in math and ad hoc determines how well you achieve to get to like green or specialist for competitive programming. So this doesn't actually help you in an interview problem because interview preparations are generally data structures and algorithms. And that's not getting, that wouldn't get asked in the, the first two problems of competitive programming to get really good at competitive programming. Right. Um, the, the third and fourth problem is generally a, uh, a data structure problem. So like uh, this part, basic C diplomacy, right? This is probably a data structure problem. And uh, the fourth one, playlist, I think this is a data structure problem, right? So the, the yeah, but it's, this is a data structure algorithm problem, but it requires math also. So like the problems are way too harder than an interview preparation, an interview question, right? They're, they're, the problems in competitive programming is way too more, more difficult. To do it so people who are good at competitive programming generally do well on their interviews but if you don't have enough time to excel in competitive programming and you're just starting it before your interview you will not do well okay on your interview so if you have an interview coming up you should actually do problems related to your interview because you're be, you're going to ace those problems like uh if you want to get well if you want to do well in competitive programming so that you could ace any interview question then good be my guess, right? It will work for long, the long term, right? For like a period of like, if you do competitive program for, I don't know, one year or two years or three years, three years, let's say, let's say three years down the line, you're just like grinding a question every single day. Like every single day, you're getting better and better, right? When you hit expert or specialist or candidate master, you could solve any interview question at that point because the questions are too difficult. Like these questions are too difficult, right? That... Once you reach the level of, hey, I am able to solve like four of these problems very easily under a two, an hour, right? No matter what, an interview, an, an, an interview during Google, and Microsoft, their questions are going to be a breeze. You could solve that literally in in a minute or two minutes, or maybe like I don't maybe maybe a minute is too too much. Maybe like ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Like you could solve any interview question at that point. But yeah. That's pretty much the gist of why I don't think competitive programming is a good use of your time for if you have an interview coming up. It might work for the long term, but it's not going to be good for like short term gains. So yeah, um, 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, right, comment, subscribe. And uh, I'm going to continue the Spodge, Spodge series. I haven't actually been able to upload for a while because of like school and midterms and stuff like that. But I'm going to be able to do that soon. Um, I'm going to come back to uploading a lot of Spodge questions. But yeah, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.